everyone. I hope you're all doing good. Um, today I'm alone with um, a guest of ours, a very special guest. Her name is Toinette. She's from South Africa, but now living in, in the US of A. And I'll let her introduce herself to you. But what I know about her is she's a friend of our church, um, our church um, Kingdom Light. Mm -hmm. And I knew I know her to be this bubbly, lively person who loves kids. Like literally, she just enters her room and she's like, oh, kind of literally kind of that kind of person. And I've been following her. I mean, she's my friend on Facebook, obviously, and I've been following her story. And um, yesterday or day before, she posted something that really touched me. And I know she's been sharing her journey. She shared her journey on weight loss. She shared some of her tidbits on depression. And I thought for a time like this, where people are in that state where things don't look um, good, but she has come out of such a serious um, condition, if I must put it, and I would like us to like her to share her testimony on how she she went through this whole process, sis, um, and how strong she is now, and give us encouragement or give us some hope for people especially who are going through the same um, process or same um, anyone who is going through depression or any kind of any sort of way so um to annette would you please just introduce yourself to to the panel to the to the um to the, to our followers yes <laughs> hello my name is Kenneth from talk i'm from a very very small town in the eastern cape and then after high school, I decided to move to Cape Town to study. Um, I went to a college where I studied kids ministry. And then I went over to um, drama. And then uh, from drama, I went over to like teaching drama. And then I went over to taking care of a special needs boy, Luca. Oh, I miss him so much in Cape Town. And then after two years, I'm like, oh, I need to like, I want to go overseas and the best option was to come overseas to all pair as well so now i'm here oh nice okay i see i see on your um on your on your um, page about luca will you tell us a little bit about luca oh luca god knew i started working with luca when i was deep deep in my depression like crazy deep and luca is literally a ball of sunshine like I can't even explain it. You know, when you, um, because I see depression as this like hole you're in and there's a ladder, but you need to choose to start climbing that ladder. And each step is a step you take. Like speaking to someone about it is a step. Some people need medication, that's a step. And I know a lot of people are against the medication, but I myself was on the medication and it really just helped me a lot. Just for the balance in my body itself, um, like the, yeah, like the medical side of it to help with that. And then the other step is to go to a therapist or a counselor to speak to. And then Luca was one of, was three steps. It wasn't just one step, it was like three steps. He just had this way of when I come to work and I'm like, oh, happy, happy, happy. But actually it's really a, like a day I'm struggling. He'll come to me and he'll ask me, do you need to move? Why are you sad? Mm. Like he just picked up things everywhere. And it, he actually taught me to actually feel what I'm feeling and not pretend. Because it's so easy to just put a mask on. Mm. Yeah, there's a phrase that says, fake it till you make it. I do not like that. Mm. I do not, I do not like that phrase. I was in a college and that was one of the things they kept on telling us, fake it till you make it, fake it till you make it. And I faked it and it actually made me like try to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. So I think that phrase for me has a very bad connection towards when I tried to commit suicide. Um, so yeah, so I went off the topic of Luca. But yes, <laughs> Luca, Luca played a very big role in me, helping me with my depression. And he was a, he was a sick year old boy. Sure. It just shows that anyone, anyone, God can use anyone, God can use anything god can use animals mm. god can use your talents god can use your passion to help you get out of where you are and it's also not just like by praying like 
the Bible says, faith without deeds is dead. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it's Peter that got out of the boat. Yes. When God said, uh, when Jesus was on the water and Jesus said, Peter, come. Mm-hmm. He was in that storm and he cl- cl- climbed out of the boat and he could actually feel what faith is because that's faith walking in the storm on the water. Mm-hmm. But there's so many things connected to depression. It's like what you eat, how you eat it, like the quantity, exercising, like self-care is needed. Like I was always like giving, 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 giving. I'm like, this is what God wants from me, to give, 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 give. But I never fooled myself. So I ran on empty and you can't pour from an empty cup. Tell us a little bit about yourself um, growing up until the, the stage where this whole thing uh, started just just for us to know a little bit about you your background like how things were like you're growing up until you you felt that this is a place where I had gotten to so i grew up in the spatch in the eastern cape very very small town i was born there and then yeah till i was 18 i only left for cape town but i grew up with a very close family with my aunts, my grandpas, my cousins, after school, all the cousins went to my oma's, my grand, my grandma's house, um, so all the parents came from work, so we always played and got in trouble together. Oof. My opa, my grandpa had this like, a sambok, a whip. Yeah. <laughs> and we did something wrong and you hear that, we ran, we <laughs> ran and we hid where we could. Yeah, it was, it was, my childhood was very nice. On Saturdays, the whole family came together and we had a braai. Um, yeah, in school, I was, I loved animals. I still love animals. I love people, like sometimes a bit too much. <laughs> um, I love art. Yeah, I, I just have this, like, I remember in, was it in grade eight or nine, I prayed to God and I asked him, God, break my heart for what breaks yours. And that is in a sense like a blessing and a curse because from from primary school i can remember like really connecting with people easily but after i asked god that i really felt such a deep connection of people like i could i could feel i could feel their pain i could feel their joy fully i could feel their anxiety fully and that really just made me realize that i want to help people i want to help children and it's just, I actually didn't know that I liked children till I went to college and on my college application, I um, like selected the wrong box. Hmm. I wanted to select like teen ministry and then I ended up selecting kids ministry. Hmm. And then I get to college and like, okay, here's all your things for kids ministry. I'm like, for what? You like kids <laughs> ministry? I'm like, no, I'm here for like teen ministry. I'm like, no, you have kids ministry. I'm like, oh my goodness, now I have to do this. And the college I was in, we went on tour like like twice a year for two weeks and ministered all over South Africa and Namibia even. Um, and then I was like in control of the kids section. And I just discovered my passion for children because I was forced on that stage. I had to pretend to be a unicorn. I had to pretend to be a ladybug. And it was the joy of the children that just like brought out some a passion out of me that God obviously put in me but I didn't know because I was I finally walked out of my comfort zone mm. and that's when you grow like a comfort zone and I um yeah and then I remember in Johannesburg we went to it was a special needs um community like there was houses for them there was like a bakery there was like shops like a whole everything like a garden for them so it's special needs children and obviously live there when they um grow out of their household they can't live there anymore anything and that's when i discovered my love for special needs children and since that day like it's just been on my heart and i actually don't like to call them special needs i rather call them special ability because they just have this ability to to see things and experience things and do things in such a beautiful way that I'm just drawn to them I just want to see the world through their eyes and I believe that God has such a pure connection with them because they're not so consumed with the world's anxiety and what 
people think of me um oh am i doing this right oh, oh i have this stepping stone i need to get to in life by this age they don't care they just love they just kiss you they just hug you they just if you give them food if you give them love they're fine they're happy with life and so i think i'm drawn to that and i believe that's I believe, yeah, I believe that's like the way, that's why I'm drawn to them because it's such a purity they live in, in such a, like a simplicity. Yeah. yeah, so that's my journey coming to, yeah, all the way from like, from where I was in dispatch mm-hmm. to Cape Town and then from Cape Town to where I am now. Okay. I wanted to know, when you noticed that you were, um, struggling with depression was it a process or it was just a one day feeling no man there's something wrong or you had to go through a process was it um was that all connected with with the weight loss journey or it was stages in your life that got you to that stage i think for me i didn't realize what because of in school they must actually bring it into the curriculum they never spoke about it depression and my family never spoke about depression it wasn't really like mental health in general is not a nice topic for a lot of people it's an uncomfortable topic yeah. and so I didn't really know what depression is like what do you feel yeah. oh it's just being sad like oh I just don't want to get in out of bed today so in college I noticed that I was drinking more than usual um like trying to, I was losing my passion. I didn't want to do anything anymore. I didn't want to help people anymore. Mm-hmm. Or oh, I was helping people so much that I can't like feel what I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so for me, it was noticing these small changes. I didn't really want to speak to my family anymore. Um, I tried to reach out to some people, but they just said, no, it's fine. You're just going through a pre-midlife crisis. Like, just brush it off. You're fine. Don't worry about it. You're teenage. You'll be fine. You laugh always. You're always happy. Yeah. So that's also a thing that I learned about the expectation. You you get angry and annoyed when people expect you to be a certain way. But, but in the end, you gave them that expectation. Like, I gave them the expectation that I'm always happy. Mm-hmm. I'm always... And that's a gift that God gave me definitely to make people laugh, to give them joy. But I was overdoing it. I was doing it when I wasn't, I wasn't um, filled up by His grace or, or just filled up myself with self-care. So I was like running on empty. Um, and I could feel it physically as well. I was, I was tired like always. If I slept for 12 hours, I slept for 14 hours, I was always tired. Um, and that's when I actually started eating more as well. A lot of emotional eating, just eating chocolates and this and this. When I, there's a thing like boredom eating. When I was bored, I just ate and ate and ate. And that's why I started like picking up a lot of weight in my college time. Um, you know, so I think that's how my, how I started feeling my depression was my personality did change. Like definitely a lot of people are like, what's wrong with you? Are you okay? And then when I actually do tell them what's wrong, they just say, oh, no, you're okay. Like we all go through it sometimes. Sure. It's, it'll be okay tomorrow, but it wasn't okay tomorrow. <laughs> um, so I think that's my experience of where, where depression, my, my depression started and how it started. You know, it's it's funny you say this because most of the time with people that are bubbly like you, when they really tell us these things, we'll be like, oh, maybe today you're just having a bad day. And it's we don't believe it. Most of the time you don't believe it because the next day, truly, she's up and about again. So you wonder, you see, mm. he actually told you you were going to be better. But exactly. meanwhile, inside you, you're not feeling the 100% that you should feel. Mm. And uh, sometimes I think this is a caution for all of us that we should listen. I mean, listen when people are talking to you and then just don't take them for granted. And so when when did this thing get serious? When did it get serious for you to attempt to um, um, take your own life? I was out the one evening drinking, drinking a lot. And it's weird that alcohol, when you have too much alcohol, it really like brings out like 
your real feelings, what you're really feeling, and they call it liquid courage. Mm. <laughs> and then, <laughs> it's very funny. So they call it like liquid courage. You have this courage because yeah. of all this alcohol in you. And then after we were at this bar, um, my friends and I said, okay, let's go to the beach. Mm. And my friends were swimming. One of my friends was sitting on a bench and I just went to sit in front of the water and I could just see the water like, going so flawlessly it's it has no effort it just like looks like if i walk in everything will just like go away because when you're in water you just float yeah. there's no heaviness there's nothing and i don't know i just stood up and i just started walking and walking and walking the day before this i actually like broke my toe because our college went out or something so my foot was even sore but i'm like I'm just going to walk into this water sure. and I was walking in and walking in and my, I was at a point where like the water was like yeah and I just could hear in my back like people running towards me and obviously my friends was coming I remember they got to me and I was fighting with my whole life like saying it's my time it's my time like I can't anymore I'm done I'm done I was it was like three guys like really bold guys and I was fighting with them with my whole world like I was fighting and they eventually got me out and we drive all the way to college no one said anything i just went into my room no one spoke about it obviously because some people are awkward of those things they don't know how to act and that's okay like some people don't know that's why i encourage people to actually go do research um to help their friends and family and it also teaches you a lot of things to see oh i actually do i do have a bit of anxiety with this and this is what i can do with it or um, so I encourage everyone to do just a little course on anxiety or depression or how to deal with people who struggle. Um, yeah, but we, we got to the college and I went into my room. And then the next morning, one of the people who work at the college called me in. And I walk into the office and he says to me, and this is part of my story that I posted on Facebook as well. He says to me, are you stupid? Like what stupidity is this if you really wanted to make this work you should have just come to me i would have taken you to the train tracks or even better i would have given you a gun please walk out of my office that was the worst that's what he spoke to me after i literally tried to take my own life it was absolutely horrible and then i went to my room and i still had my painkillers from when like the previous the previous previous day when I like hurt my foot mm -hmm. I was like I'm just gonna drink all this pills like so, I mean no one cares no one has spoken to me no one mm -hmm. like this no one cares um obviously I haven't told my family about that when it happened like on that day I didn't speak to them so they probably would have like flew down or driven down immediately when they hurt but I I was just in such a state I was in that storm and I just, I had no, I call it a tornado. Where everything is happening, everything is happening in that tornado. And then I drank this bunch of pills. I'm actually supposed to be dead. <laughs> because by, by grace again, I just threw up all those pills. Those pills just came up. I didn't, no one had to like force me to like put my finger in my throat to throw it up. They just came out. But, and then the next day that's when the tornado actually calmed down and i could actually see my goodness mm. all of this happened like i can't mm. i don't understand like, and i don't know where to start because when a tornado is going it just picks up things yeah. everywhere yeah. and when the tornado stops it just scatters everything everywhere mm. and once that tornado is over you're so overwhelmed you don't know what to pick up first it's it's very overwhelming and once again, I didn't know how to deal with these things because no one ever spoke to me about it. Mm -hmm. And that's when I think often my suicide, it's weird, I actually went deeper into my depression. Usually the suicide is like when you just can't anymore, when yeah. you're done. Yeah. But for me personally, I think it's how the circumstances after my suicide, that's what actually made it worse, like how people treated treated me never really spoke about it and didn't come to me to comfort me because 
I believe we need people. We do. Like Jesus walked this earth of 12 disciples. He didn't walk it alone. When he went up, when he was carrying his cross alone, someone else came out of the crowd and carried it with him. That's true. And God places people in our life to help us with our crosses. Yeah. And I know people say, don't carry each other's burdens like this and this and this. But I think there's a Bible verse that actually says that we need to help others carry their burdens. Because yeah. God knows we can't, we can't do this alone. Being human is difficult. <laughs> it's really not easy. Um, and I didn't, I didn't feel, and what's funny is like, this is a Christian, it was a Christian college. Yeah. And I, I didn't, I didn't see, I didn't see Jesus. I didn't feel Jesus in those people. Not everyone, obviously this, but yeah, it makes sense. Um, so they told me to phone my parents to tell them what I did. Sure. They didn't even call them. So I just sit there in the state still and speak to my mom and dad and I think that was the most difficult part because they were so far away and I know they're like oh, they're the best parents ever like they're so supportive and everything and then my mom was like okay okay it's fine we'll um speak like get a psychiatrist what 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 and then the college one of the people there took me to like a institution they're like okay we're gonna put you in this institution that was their their um comment on it and their help i'm like i don't want to be in this institution it's scary like I don't, i'm not crazy i'm not crazy i'm just struggling there's a difference like there's some people yeah i think the the mental health um struggles is so big and so broad um, it's yeah, it's very difficult to say because I was just I was just struggling. Mine wasn't because you get depression when you're you get emotional depression. You also get like genetic depression, and that's when people need to be on meds like for their whole life. And yeah, those people are heroes. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> for me, for that like two years that I was really in depression, I struggled. Like those people. Yeah, I don't even, they should get crowned, they should go on Olympic sport because <laughs> they're amazing. Um, but yes, that was, and then I went to a psychiatrist every Thursday, every Thursday, and then the college phoned my mom, they're like, we're just going to send in at home because she's just drifting around, she's not doing anything, she's scaring the other students. And it was, <sighs> what's sad is the students help me more mm. than the people that work there mm -hmm. and once again that's what i just see like you don't need a title you don't need a master's degree you don't need the 10 years experience all you need is a compassionate heart and the willingness to help mm -hmm. and that's what i saw of those students that's what i see of luca that's what, what i see of the new boy i'm looking after that's that's what i see like on to social media of people sharing their experiences. That's all you need. You just need the compassion in your heart to help others. That's true. And then I decided this place is not for me anymore. Like mm. it added to my depression and it like brought out my depression in a sense. And then I decided to leave. Then I went to a different college where I started for a year and then my mom said, listen, you we're having a bit of financial issues. Like we can't mm. let you study anymore. You need to start working or you need to come home. Mm. And being out of the house for five years and having the sense that I need to go home, I'm like, oh, I can't do that. <laughs> like going back to a routine. And don't get me wrong, sometimes that's needed. Sometimes yeah. there's a season where you need to move home yeah. because home, when you think about home, you think about comfortability, yeah. you think about security and love yeah. and nurture and you need that sometimes don't get me wrong like this some seasons you're gonna have to go home but I was like no god I can't I can't I can't I can't and then he sent Luca on my way sure and my depression has yeah as by that time was like under wraps mm. but I don't know I can't remember what happened and I just I just started getting all the signs again of me going into depression but I think it's because 
I couldn't finish my study, so I was thinking myself mm-hmm. in such a deep hole. I'm like, I'm like, the, um, I think I was like 23, 22. I'm, not, I'm 22. All my friends are done with studies. They have, they're doing their masters and they're buying their own houses. They're getting married. They're having children. This and this and this. So I was, the mind is very strong. Mm-hmm. The mind can either make you feel like a queen or it can make you feel like a rat. Mm-hmm. That's literally, your mind is so strong. That's why I always, always say like your mind, body and soul. Like you shouldn't, your mind is very strong. You shouldn't forget to nurture your mind and feed it positive thoughts and everything. But yeah, I was into the depression again and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to look for jobs. I'm looking for jobs and then look okay. And it's crazy how God uses like that for me it looked like a very bad thing for me not to finish my studies yeah. but for him it was like a stepping stone right. like that storm of Peter in the ship yes. everyone's like oh my goodness this is a storm what is going to happen what is going to happen yeah. but God was teaching them faith yes God was teaching them faith in action yes and God was teaching me that there is not there's no time limit like the, the journey is the destination and the destination is the That's journey. Good. <laughs> like you learn, you don't, when you get to the destination, you say, okay, this is what I learned, this is what I learned. You learn through the journey. That's the journey. Like, And there's times when you need to race, like on a road, there's a pit stop, like where you can quickly go get a power rate of coffee. And mm-hmm. that's needed. There's, there's a part where you stop and you have picnic and another family comes and you learn from them. Like, mm-hmm. There's different, there's times where your wheel gets flat and you need to change it. And that's where you learn a skill. Um, and when you see, when you're busy driving, you see your petrol light coming on and it's red, pull it up. Don't wait till your car can't go anymore. When you feel you, you need to be filled up, go get filled up. Everyone has their different ways. Um, for me, weirdly, it became like the ocean where I had such a negative thing with the ocean and it was funny I made a, a very good friend here we're very good friends now and she's like let's go kayak on the ocean I'm like okay <laughs> let's go do that but I had this silent yeah. fear since yeah. I tried to commit suicide I'm like oh, I'm just gonna do it let's just do it and there were so many waves and this last wave we went over I just took like a breath and when it went down my fear just went sure. it was just gone and again it's like like you need to do you need to take action against it like you can say oh i'm scared of roller coasters i'm scared of roller coasters but once you get in it and you do it it's fun i like i'm also scared of roller coasters but i still force myself to do it <laughs> um but there's also there's also where people are actually scared of things, which is normal. But if it's like like for me, like the ocean, and now it's it's like my place where I go to get full. So again, like it's crazy how it works. That story about Peter on the on the um, boat with Jesus when you know when with all his disciples and. They were wondering why he's he's almighty god why couldn't he just calm the 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 waters you could just speak god you just created us with your word why don't you just pick and just calm these waters but he didn't bring the storm but in that storm he was able to say what is your faith in what are you looking exactly for? you know and then when he was on again on, on on the other side where peter saw him he said do not look anywhere look unto me but when peter just started looking around about and seeing all the distractions he was going down but he says look up and every time sometimes that's what god is just trying to tell us look up i bring situations situations come yes. not, not necessary but i find a way to make it work and this is the hope we have in christian we as christians have is that he does not leave us just to drown he does not leave us and facing your fear that's something that people don't do and you were bold enough to do that and i mean if that's the place you get filled imagine it turning turning your morning into dancing that's just a, exactly a, 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 a vivid way of it happening so mm. yeah, you 
please do continue and look at yes. this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and then I saw the of Luca and just the way you was seeing things and so many like passions just grew in me, like these dreams I have. Sure. Um because of Luca and Luca just I don't know how to explain him. I just want to cry about it because it's so amazing, like how he is. And I think I'm emotional because I'm missing him as well. <laughs> but he's just this, he's really just this sunshine. And there's a, there's in the Bible, it says the part where Jesus says, let the children come to me. Mm-hmm. And I just see Luca, the one running first. He's just running, he's just running to God. It's like, oh, yeah, like I can just see that. And I was, a lot of times, like I had to go do shopping with the family, for the family, and then I would take Luca with, or we'll go to the park, and he'll just walk to people. I remember he's like six years old. Mm. He is delayed. His mm. his need was his he's delayed with his growth of his mind. So he was six years old, but he was like two, three year, years old. Mm. Um, he'll just walk to people and say, "Pray for you," sure. and he'll pray for these people. And he just like told, he just taught me this boldness as well. To it's okay just to go to people and do kindness. Come on. Kindness can go such a long way. Like, I don't. It's so easy to be kind. Just giving someone a smile. Just paying for someone's coffee. Mm-hmm. But it's kindness doesn't even need to cost money. Just mm-hmm. um, sending a motivation to someone every day or. I don't know, there's so much to do with kindness and I actually, yeah, he showed me, Lupa showed me the, like, the fruit of the spirit in person, like, what it's supposed to mean. Sure. Um, and then, while I was working with Luca, I had this, this dream that I want to start, almost like a, not a school, but like after work activity for special needs children because even though society says they accept them they don't there's not a lot of op- mm-hmm. opportunities for special needs children after school or even in school like they go to school the special needs school and then afterwards there's no sport activities for them there's no drama activities there's no extra murals because people are like oh they're special needs yeah. they don't need those yeah. things yeah. they're children they need to experience being children i mean lucas never even in his life experienced the movie he's never gone to the theaters because he can't sit still for long Mm -hmm. he gets fixated on a word and says it the whole time he'll keep on asking questions keep on kissing me hugging me but he still needs to experience a movie so when i go back home now i really want to look into this and start like an extra mural after in the weekends because it's funny how God put people in my life so many years ago that I'm actually I'm speaking to them now again and they're helping me. Like people who can dance, people who can make films, mm-hmm. people who's good at like like some business because oh like work, like sums and math. That was not one of my skills. I oh got <laughs> definitely not. But God like God knows our shortfalls and He puts people like it's a puzzle that comes together. And all these people, and people of music, who's musically inclined that I'm speaking to, and like people's good of art, and people's good of sport, and all these people just like coming together, walking into my life now randomly again. Um, so this thing is just growing and growing and growing. So it, yeah, Luca, yeah, I don't know how to explain it. Luca's like a saving grace to me. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I was. After I left Luca, my my depression, I haven't felt, these days where I do feel it still, where I do wake up and I'm just sad for no reason. Mm-hmm. But I've gotten to this point how I know the difference is I know how to handle it. I know how to um, work with it and not work it away. Because if you try to push it away, it just comes back with full force. Mm-hmm. You need to learn how to incorporate it and be just accept it. Mm-hmm. If I wake up and I'm feeling sad for no reason, I accept it. Mm-hmm. But I know that, okay, maybe t- today, teenage, you're gonna take, after every hour or five minutes, you're just gonna sit and just be. Mm-hmm. 
mm. or you're gonna go to the beach after work mm. and just cry mm. just cry it all out and just be or for bible study i'm gonna take an extra hour because proverbs um, i read somewhere it was actually written for people with depression mm. so proverbs has been such a oh it's been amazing my favorite my favorite verse in Proverbs is Proverbs 17, verse 22, that says, A, cheer, a cheerful heart is good medicine, yeah. but a crushed spirit dries up the bone. Yeah. <laughs> and I've also, like with, with my um, with my journey of depression, I've learned that happiness is fleeting. It's created by circumstances, by people, by things, everything that's worldly. But, but joy is this settled assurance that God is in control and joy laughing from joy is just one of the manifestations mm-hmm. when I'm crying that's also a manifestation of joy when I'm struggling that's also a manifestation of joy because like I said like the journey is the destination and it doesn't mean when I wake up one morning and I'm just horribly sad and I don't want to get out of bed that I don't have joy I still have it I still have it yeah. I'm just having I'm just having a moment and I'll, that's something I also want to teach people. It's okay to have your moments. Like, I mean, Jesus cried before he had to go on the cross. He literally said it was like sweating blood. Yeah. I'm not saying like having a bad day is like being crucified, but it is <laughs> difficult. It is very difficult. And just to accept your emotions because God gave us feelings, but also learning the boundary and the line between accepting your feelings and letting your feelings control you is a very big difference and I still struggle with that like I make a lot of decisions based on my feelings and I need to I'm in that like season of learning okay this is how I feel now but feelings are also temporary it's not the but what is um always there and what will never change is the love of God Mm -hmm. and God loves you no matter what. God loves you through the storm. God's, God loves you through the struggle. God loved me right through that depression. And the new thing that's like picking on me is like, when I tell people my testimony and what I've been through, like, oh, but you're, you're Christian. How can you have depression? Yeah. Like, <laughs> or you're Christian and you try to commit suicide. That doesn't make sense. And it's something that I want to normalize of people of strong faith that they also have mental like issues. It's normal. Mm. The world is a very difficult place. Mm. Mm. It's very difficult. It's and the enemy the enemy won't attack something that doesn't scare him. Mm. That's true. And it's funny because my one of my strong suits was always being happy, always being bubbly. And I love I love that. I love to have the joy to make other people laugh and that was my way of minister stirring to people was with joy yeah. and then the enemy came in like oh okay I see, I see what God is doing yeah and he, he attacked the mind a lot yeah. yes yeah so if you feel attacked it just means you have you have so such a special thing that's happening that God wants to use you because the, the enemy won't attack nothing he attacks something that scares him that's true. That's true. Yeah. Sure. Thank you so much. And um, I just wanted to know, with with all you're saying, you saying, you you keep saying that there are some days that are good, yet some days that are bad. With somebody who has gone through um, depression, are you saying that it never goes away? Is, is that how the feeling is, or surely it's will come to a point where it goes away, or is it a process still going through you to say that I'm going to get to that point, or um, it's it's a daily struggle. Is it something that never ends? Is it a never ending something or it, it does come to an end? For me personally, I am still struggling with depression, but I got to a point where I don't even need the medication anymore because there's so many other things that help me like that ladder. Yeah. And also to get to just accepting because a lot of people say Okay, now when I get to this point, I'll be fine. Okay, when I get to this point, I'll be happy. To let that go completely. Because we look at other people like, oh, they're so happy. Oh, they got married now. And that just, for me to look at that and saying, oh, I need to get there. It just made me 
go backwards. Mm, mm, mm. And some people do like get out of depression completely and that's like amazing, that's beautiful. And then some it's they have it, they have it and they they just have it. And then for me um personally I do experience it some days a lot, like a lot at once though. But like I said, I've I, I, I learned so many tools on my journey that doesn't make it to a point where I actually want to commit suicide again. And for me, that is that is growth. For other people, it will be like, oh no, but you're 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 really deep soul. But for me, that's growth. And yeah, I think yeah, every day is like a, a prison. You don't know what you're gonna get. But I know how to how to take care of care of it and look after it and look after me and take care of me and and food and moving your body and all those things incorporate you need to incorporate that into every day that is and i actually started only last year because last year when the lockdown started i also i fell into it fully again like it was horrible and my friend that I lived with he is a performing arts student so he's quite fit and quite health oriented and he's also Christian and he said like listen here we need to start doing something because it's really like um and also like I struggled with my knees with my weight and everything and when I started eating more healthier I just felt I had serotonin and I had endorphins even after exercising, it releases that and, and God places all these things. He gives you healthy foods. He says, look after your body because it's a temple. Um, he just does, he, he doesn't just say it for like, don't have tattoos or don't have earrings or <laughs> what other, like everyone says. It's actually about like what you put in your body because um, that has an effect like how you think, how you are, um, because too many like fatty foods, it brings your mood down completely. Don't get me wrong, now and then a Big Mac meal is amazing. <laughs> I literally had one last night. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. <laughs> but it's just, again, like it's the quantity of things you have. And, and chocolate, chocolate is also very nice. Like, continent chocolate. <laughs> but also it's like, like the quantity. And, and you don't need to do exercises every day. Just going for a 40, 40 minute walk and just breathing in listening to worship music or being on video call with someone while you're walking just get your body moving because it releases endorphins it just makes you breathe in air like fresh air um so i think definitely for me the depression never stopped but i learned how to live with it and how to when i do feel down how to help myself out of that hole yeah, so I think yeah, it never stopped for me, but I'm learning every day and I'm accepting it. I think the first step was accepting it, accepting it, because if you can't accept it, you can't start climbing the ladder. Then you're just gonna sit in that hole and just gonna fill up, fill up, fill up, fill up till you can't anymore. So the first step is definitely to accept it. I am so encouraged and I hope those listening to us are also encouraged because I know at a point this will, will be a story of the past. I do believe it so much because God doesn't give us depression as we all know. He doesn't bring the storm. But through the storm, you're going to learn so many things. And yes, there will be a point at which it ends. But the journey to it is where your focus is and i'm so excited mm -hmm. that when you talk about in all this you see god you see god through luca even with the friends that are coming in your life right now and it's just god just telling you hey i haven't forgotten do you have you known this aspect of me that i can use a little child to just bring you out of how what you are feeling i can bring friends that connect revive your dream mm -hmm. to set up something for people that you are passionate about i mean he sent so many things just to prove to you that i've never left you and I'm, I'm, I'm also encouraged because I know that when our focus is on him, he never leaves us, as he said, nor forsakes us. And people mm. who listen to you today, I'm sure will be saying, hey, okay, this is what it is. We have accepted that maybe we are in depression, but God does not leave us there. 
So the little things, the little things, as you said, the little ladders that climb every day. And yes, you are a Christian. Sometimes life happens. And if you are in this situation, it doesn't mean that, um, you know, God has left you or you're no longer a Christian. But we take courage and believe that our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can even phantom. So I think lastly, I would like you to just like tell us um, in, in, in two, three lessons that you think if anybody is listening to you today, can take home and meditate and, and, and have um, courage or have encouragement to go through the process they are going through. I think to, for me, what I've learned like fully is like you can't, you can't give from an empty cup. I see like giving us this bucket of sweets and you just give, 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 you give, but you don't go back to refill it. And also people have different ways of refilling it. Like I definitely go to God to get refilled, but I also, I do art or I do self care. I do my exercise, I eat healthy and it like helps me to fill that bucket so I can give more. So I think it's just, you need to do self care. You need you need to look after your body because you can't you can't do God's work if you're if you're weak. Um, yes, just to just love yourself. Like the and also a lot of people are against self love because they say it makes you like it gives you a big head or yeah, anything. Egoistic. Like, <laughs> yes, but for me actually, when I started loving myself, I could love people more. I could do more. And I could actually do my passion and be active and work with children and run around with them and be silly with them. But before, I wasn't looking after myself, so I couldn't be the, the full person that God wanted me to be. Yeah. So I think just, just to start on the journey of self-care and self-love, it's difficult. It really is. It's, there's some days where I don't even want to look in the mirror or I just want to eat a chocolate instead of an apple. But you need to be disciplined. Like become disciplined of yourself so i think just start off the journey of self-care and self-love and someone once told me like look up like your crown is falling off oh. and it just like made me visualize like like jesus saying it and it's like pulling my head up it's like look up your crown is falling off look in my eyes and follow me um so yes i think that's like self-care and self-love is is a big thing you need it for yourself Thank you. Thank you so much. And it's funny you say um, filling up yourself. So we are I'm in um, children ministry. And one of our key things is that you can't go teach the kids if you are not full yourself. So it's, it's exactly. very important that you search the word. You go go and have mm. fellowship with Christ before you come and teach the kids. Because if you are not full, you, can't, you cannot give what you do not have. So sometimes we Christians, we, we just thrive so much on grace we say grace is made available there's no relationship anymore because we think there's so much grace we can run mm. much on grace but it gets to a time where grace wants you to have fellowship with him to say where yes. can I you up where can i console you where can i feed you my child and so much as we go through daily lives i mean COVID hit so many people and People were found wanting, especially we Christians. We were now facing, do you really believe this or not? And the God that you serve, is, is he all-knowing, all-powerful? All Does he heal? Does he? We go back to the foundation and God exactly did not bring the COVID, but he brought an awareness to say, guys, you cannot live this life if your focus is not on me. So exactly. in this life we are, there are so many things that is depressing. But our choice to follow Christ or to focus on him is what brings us out of so many things. So, guys, mm -hmm. I hope you enjoyed our um, the testimony. I enjoyed it. I'm encouraged. And, you know, I'm not the depression type. I'm the one who says that you cannot be a Christian and be depressed. I am one of those people. But now I've learned that life does happen. But when the thing is what you do with it when the storm hits you, mm -hmm. focus on Christ letting go and, and, and knowing as she said fill yourself up if especially those of us in ministry do not go um, on on what do you call it on a dry on a dry um, every time and still be given take a moment relax fill up 
and take care of yourself. Love yourself enough to fill yourself up to be able to give. So to Annette, thank you so much for your time. We do really appreciate you. And we will be following you on this journey in, in, any, in, in time that you feel like coming back. Please let us know and then come and share how God is healing and, and, and giving you so much grace for this, mm -hmm. this season in your life. So thank you once again for making time for us. And so um, any last words? Anything you want well, to say? Again? I feel very privileged and blessed that you asked me to share my testimony um, and my journey because my story is not my own story. Um, and once I like, I decided like, I'll never change what I went through because it's actually helping others and helping others show the grace and the love of God. So thank you. So thank much. you for this opportunity. <laughs> Thank you for coming and making time on your week free day and that you can share with us. We do really appreciate it. So until next time, or yeah, um, guys, thank you for also staying tuned with us and um, do enjoy it and check our other videos that talks about um, anxiety, depression and all that ways. We have seen somebody who has really gone through it and you can hear from her that she has gone through the process with God, not all by herself. So do check out some of our videos, the discussions, and hear what we also have to say on this issue. So thank you, and then we will see you again. Bye-bye. Thank you.